because I want to be able to provide shared storage for the virtual hosts that I uh, create on this computer, um, since it's a lab, I actually just create a virtual SAN on here instead of actually uh, buying a, an actual dedicated NAS. Uh, so what I do is I'll uh, install a, a virtual machine on this computer which runs a, uh, an actual SAN operating system. And the one that I'm using at the moment is OpenFiler and that gives me the opportunity to use iSCSI as well as NFS. So once I've actually um, configured the networking uh, on this uh, computer here, I'll then go through a process of just creating the virtual machine and installing OpenFiler, which is relatively simple. Uh, so let's give it a name here. And I'll point it to the local hard drive for this uh, physical computer. And this is also the same drive that I'll be adding more uh, hard drives to this SAN to, to actually create the LUNs from. And since then it's OpenFiler that I'm uh, running here, I'll use the, uh, the Linux operating system and then send OS 64 bit. To start with, I only select one uh, network card to use to make it easier for me to decide which network card is the actual management card because these network cards will be in different port groups. So, as it happens, this one's already in the management uh, port group, but I'll change the adapter type over to VMXNet3. I'll then go with thin provisioning since it's a lab and I'll just make some final changes. So I'll, I mean I actually reduce the amount of memory that I allocate to this virtual machine and I'll delete the floppy disk drive and then point the CD drive over to the ISO file. Tick the, uh, the option here to connect it power on and then obviously once that machine's created I'll power it up and go through the installation process. It's relatively quick and pretty self-intuitive, really. Um, I mean, really, the hardest decision is what um, what IP addressing you're going to use. But all the same, I'll go through this installation process because, as I say, it's it's pretty quick to do. So here at the wizard, I'll uh, just click next to get started, and I'll select the keyboard layout. <coughs> I'll get a warning about how it's going to wipe the data on the uh, any existing data and then it'll ask me about setting up partitions and which hard drive to use but I can leave those as the defaults. Again last uh, warning about the data being lost. I'll give it a, an actual static IP address and this is for the actual network management of this, uh, this SAN. I'll disable the IP version 6 since I'm not using it at the moment and I'd rather not have unnecessary uh, traffic on the actual network. I'll set the uh, the actual host name for this and set the default gateway and then the actual DNS server for this network. Select the time zone and then the actual root password. And then now it goes through the process of um, creating partitions, formatting them, and installing the operating system. Once it's finished, it'll ask me to reboot, and then it'll power up the operating system. And uh, what, what happens is it then leaves me at a, a login prompt, where it also gives me the URL to actually uh, log in with through a web browser. And then I can start uh, configuring the actual SAN. Now, it doesn't actually take that long to do, but all the same, I'll, I'll pause the video and then I'll come back once it's ready to actually be configured. Okay, so it's now at the actual login prompt, and as you can see, there's a URL pointing to the, um, the administration uh, web page for this uh, SAN. So I'll jump over to the web browser. I've already put in the URL there. And Obviously, it comes up with a warning here because it's using a self-signed certificate. It takes a bit of a, a while here just to uh, make that initial connection, but um, once it does, it'll it'll give me the login page. And instead of actually logging in using the root account, I'll be logging in with a different account called OpenFiler.
So now that I've got the login prompt, I'll just enter that uh, open file username. And the password uh, by default is actually password, so it's uh, still worth changing, even though it's a lab, uh, just to enforce the habit, really. So first thing I do is I'll go over to the accounts tab and click on this admin password option. And I'll change the password straight away. I'll click the submit button there and it actually automatically logs me straight out um, even though it doesn't actually show that and if I click on any of these uh, tabs or links eventually it'll time out and um, it'll actually say that you're logged out so what I found is it's easy just to click on that logout button there and automatically I get that warning now that I, that I wasn't even logged in so I'll log back in this time using the new uh, password that I put in So I'll just go over to the system tab here and you can see there's only one network card so one of the first things I need to do is to add in some uh, extra network cards and these will be the ones that the actual uh, virtual hosts will get access to the SAN uh, from so I'll add that network card in and I'll change it to VMXNet3 and I'll set the port group to storage which is the port group that um, uh, which is in VLAN 11 there, which is uh, how the actual virtual hosts get access to the SAN. Now I want two of them so I can test out features like uh, multipathing for instance. So once I've added those two additional network cards I'll also add a, an actual extra hard drive as well which I'll be using for the storage. So I'll I'll give this a bit more uh, disk space and set up a thin provision. I also change the controller over to 1.0 and that's because it gives me a new SCSI uh, controller which I can I can change the type to uh, para-virtual uh, which is uh, meant to be better for uh, data throughput. So once those changes have actually completed I'll go back to the actual web browser and just jump uh, between the tabs here just to refresh things. As you can see I've now got two uh, extra network cards. So what I do for this multipathing is I create a bonded interface out of these two new network cards. So it's effectively a, a logical interface and I'll give it the IP address uh, that the, the actual virtual hosts will access this um, virtual SAN through. Uh, there's some features here that can be changed but I'll leave those uh, as is and then click on continue and then that creates my uh, network card uh, in the storage port group. So once I've created the actual network cards and got those all set up I need to create a network access control list um, to decide you know, what devices can get access to the LUNs that I create in iSCSI. So I'll give this a name. Uh, here I can either put in a, a network address or a specific host address but because this is going to be um, a LUN that I'm going to be using uh, initially that all hosts will have access to I'm just putting the network address for that um, entire subnet and giving it the slash 24 bit subnet mask there or if I wanted to as I say I could you know pin it down to individual hosts so I'm just from here I can just create network access control lists as I uh, as I need them. Um, once I've done that, I'll click on this clock setup option here because I want to actually uh, set this virtual SAN to point to an NTP server. And I've actually set up a, an internal NTP server which talks to the, the public internet to sync with. And all of my internal computers sync with this uh, internal NTP server. So once I've put that IP address in, I'll just you know I'll just click that setup synchronization button and that sets up NTP. The next thing I need to do is because I'm going to be using iSCSI here, is to click on the services tab. I need to enable the iSCSI target service. So I click on that, and then I need to actually start the service. So now that's actually up and running, I can then start creating some volumes, and then I can actually uh, create LUNs. Uh, from those for iSCSI. So I'll click on the Volumes tab here. Because it's a new installation, um, 
it's giving me this uh, link here to create a new physical volume, so I'll click that. I've got a choice of two hard drives at the moment, so since this is the one that's going to be used for the storage for this LUN, I'll, I'll click that one. And in this case, I'm, I'm going to use all of this um, actual disk space here, so I'm just going to click on the Create button. So that creates uh, an entire partition on that uh, hard drive that I've created. So the, the next step is to click on the volume groups here because I've, I've actually got to create a volume group. So I'll give it a name. So in my case, I'm just calling things like iSCSI for VMware Lab. And then I've got to select the actual physical volume that I'm going to be using for it. So uh, there is only one at the moment, so I'll just tick that one and then click Add Volume Group. Once the volume group has been created, I'll then click on the Add Volume to, uh, to create a volume that will be added to this volume group. So I'll just give a name, so like iSCSI LUN uh, 1 for instance. It's a description, I'm just going to leave it the same as the actual volume name. I'm going to use all of the disk space from this um, particular partition here that I've got. and So I'll just paste that into, into here. And because I'm going to be using iSCSI, I've got to change the file system over to, to block. And then I'll click the Create button. So now that I've done that, I've actually got a LUN which is uh, actually ready to be used. So the first thing I've got to do to actually set up um, iSCSI and allow these hosts to get access to that LUN is to, to click this button here, which is for iSCSI targets. Now, I haven't created any yet because this is a new installation so it, it gives me a, a target IQN as, as an example there so I'll, I'll just go with that one and click uh, the add button so that creates my first iSCSI target there's some additional features that I can change here if I want to but I'll just leave them as default I'll then click on the LUN mapping tab because I've got to map that LUN to this particular iSCSI target so there is only one LUN at the moment I'll just click the map uh, button there so that maps the LUN to the iSCSI target. The next thing I've got to do is click on the Network ACL tab to decide what can get access to this based on you know network addressing. And by default, um, it's selected this uh, one I've already created and set the access to denied. So I've got to change that to allow, and then click the update button. And then any virtual host that I've got, for instance, in this network, will then be able to get access to this LUN through iSCSI. If I wanted to, I mean, as well as being able to um, restrict access based on IP address, I've also got an, op an option here for chapel authentication. So if I select that uh, chapel authentication tab, I can enter usernames and passwords um, to place restrictions. And then, obviously, if uh, one of the virtual hosts needs access to a particular LUN that I've assigned a, a username and password, I'd have to configure the same username and password on that virtual host's um, iSCSI configuration. But as this is a lab, um, and this is the first LUN which I want all virtual hosts to have access to, I'm not doing any uh, access restrictions at all. So as I say, anything within this subnet can get access to it, and there's no chap authentication. So once I've done that, I mean, I've set up um, the initial LUN, and I can start using this SAN. And Obviously, if I want to then start adding more LUNs, what I would do is go back to the, uh, the virtual machine and start adding more hard drives and then come over uh, here to the uh, network management page and start creating volumes and mapping those to either the same iSCSI target or creating new iSCSI targets if I wanted to. But as far as setting it up for uh, iSCSI, I mean, that's, that's all you need to do. If you're going to use NFS, I mean, it's slightly different where you go through this uh, shares tab and go through the wizard here but in this particular case I'm just using iSCSI at the moment um, so that's as far as I'll go